Well, first night back on an old syndicate water that I've been on for a number of years, and this is the result. 38 pound. This is called Split Peck Double Belly something else. It's got a few names, this one. It was a cracking fish, and it gave me one hell of a fight. It's, uh, it's quite nice to get back on the syndicate and get one first night, because it has been fishing really, really tough the last few years, so I'm really pleased to be off the mark for the year. And let's hope there's a few more to follow. That 38 was a cracking way to start my 2021 season on here. I'm on my North Ant Syndicate water that I've been a member for, for quite a while. And I've been fishing elsewhere during the early spring and, and um, uh, during the winter. So it's nice to get down to a, a water that I know quite well and get off to a fly and start with that fish. I first joined here in 2014 um, and I came on for a fish called Tyson, which was mid 40 back then um, and I'd had you know I had a really good time of it you know I went from the off I had quite a few good fish my first fish out of here was a fish called Swing Swang which went on to do I think upper 40 in the end uh, it died last year um, I had the goldfish common at 45 that was a cracking fish I had a 42 common called the dog common uh, another 40 called the long common which has not been out for just over two years now actually so that one's on the missing list but it's the fish are doing that now, they're going on the missing list and uh, and then coming back, you know, bigger in weight. I've really enjoyed my time on here and, and had pretty much the whole of the lake stock but Tyson. And yeah, a few years ago, I, it, it, I sort of called it quits on here and sort of thought, no, no, if, you know, I'm just sick of getting recaptures and sick of capturing the, uh, the same fish over and over again and, and, and not getting Tyson, you know, and, and, and when I caught Geordie, which is, one of the other sought after fishing here. You know, real cracking fish, Geordie is. It's a long, dark, common uh, with a creamy underbelly. And I caught that back in 2017 on a family session. You know, I had my missus down here and my kids and the dog, and we're just enjoying the summer sun in the, uh, in the August holidays. And I had a hell of a session. I think I took five fish that session. Um, and it went really, really well. It was just nice to, to be there with the family and, and catch a few. And they really enjoyed being out and they love it down here. It's, it's, just such a nice, quiet place to spend a bit of time. So after I caught the Geordie, I, I sort of thought, yeah, my, my, my time's done in here now. It's, uh, I just kept getting repeat captures after repeat captures. So I, I called it a day. But all the time I kept hearing reports about Tyson getting bigger and bigger. And I just kept thinking about that fish and I thought, no, I've got to get back on here. I've got to have another go for it. And I rejoined last year, but I didn't, I didn't have the sort of results I should have had, basically. I, I fished it wrong, I fished it how I used to fish it. Um, instead of adapting with the times and rolling with the times, I, I stuck to a plan of, you know, they included fishing out to the centre, fishing off baited areas and just, um, just, just doing what I did back, you know, three, four, five, six years ago when I was quite successful on here. But the things have changed so much on here now. Uh, the fish have got a lot bigger. They're not as hungry. Um, you don't get multiple fish hits like you used to. The fish don't come out multiple times in a year. And, you know, like I already mentioned, some of the fish have been missing for two or three years, but they could well rock up um, at, at a huge weight. So I got it, I got it wrong last year, but this year I've, I've had a rethink about what to do. And I've come back with, um, you know, a fresh mindset and uh, a fresh way of fishing the lake. And, you know, I was lucky to get off the mark on my first night with that 38. So really, really pleased with that one. I got down here yesterday for my second session of the year and I spent two to three hours walking around talking to a couple of lads that have done the weekend down here and just trying to gauge what had been happening and, 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 and what had come out. Um, and nothing had, well, tell a lie, I think there'd been one small fish, one of the stockies had been out um, Thursday night, so nothing had come out the weekend. So the 38 I had was, was the last kind of original fish that had been out. So it, it had not really fished well for the last six, seven days but the wind was absolutely hacking into here. So um, I got set up in here, fished the same spot I did last week. Uh, um, I put all three rods out on, on an area in a line, 
that fine. Then it's, 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 it's a weird area, it's like gravel on the right hand side. It's firm, but not quite gravelly. Then it goes into a bit of light weed, uh, which, is, which is great for saying there was no weed at all last year, but there's, there's a little bit of light weed popping up. So I've got all three rods in a line, not too far out out there. And I just spotted a load of bait over the top, but I didn't want to go too heavy with the bait. I wanted to, to put bits and pieces out and uh, just, just give them plenty of flavor and plenty of stuff there to feed on. So I put a few spawns out there last night. Uh, got all the rods settled, which was not as easy as it should have been with a big sort of semi crosswind sort of blasting across some sort of left to right, but sort of coming into it, more, more coming into the swim next door, if I'm honest. Um, so I've got everything settled, got everything sorted, got an early night, and um, at some point in the early hours, not long before dawn, I got a couple of beeps uh, on the receiver and then quite a few violent beeps, and it was, it was an up and down drop back. Um, I jumped out of the bivvy and saw this. Uh, right hand rod here, just tighten up, out the clip, everything was up tight. So I just picked it up and there was just a dead weight on there, just just pretty much dead weight. It was just, I thought, what well, is, is it in weed? I thought, no, there's next to no weed. So I just kept winding, easing it this way, easing it this way, then I felt a nod, nod, nod. I thought, yeah, there's, there's a fish on the end and it feels heavy as well. It wasn't going mad like the 38 I had last week, it was just slow and plodding. And eventually I managed to slip the net under it, flick the head torch on and there's a big breeze block of a of a common sitting there in the net, a big old, big old chunk, definitely over 40 pounds. And uh, yeah, I was really pleased to get my second fisher of the season. Look at this for a beast. This is an absolute breeze block of a fish. You probably can't see it from that angle, but it's, it's so wide across the back. And that's where most of its weight is. Just under 43 pound, 42, 14. And it's a fish called one barb for, uh, for obvious reasons. And he's a proper, proper chunk. This is my second session on the syndicate this year. And as far as I know, this is the biggest fish to come out so far. It's not the biggest fish in the lake, but it's a chunk nevertheless. And I'm quite pleased to make its reacquaintance. I did catch it many years ago uh, when I first joined the syndicate, but it's um, put on nearly 10 pounds since then. So uh, not really into recaptures, but I'll take crackers like this. Absolute cracker. Just let it go. Right big head on it. I've been watching the water all morning and not a great deal of showed out there. This, this wind's dropped a little bit now, but about 45 minutes to an hour ago, the wind kicked up, started blowing sort of 25 mile an hour gusts, it started raining quite heavily and you could feel the drop in the temperature and, and potentially the drop in the air pressure as well. And that just seemed to flip a switch out there and the fish just started showing. Um, initially they were showing at, at range towards the middle of the pit, 100 and something yards out. Um, but as, as, as time went on and they had about a, three quarters of an hour showing, so just after, so in the storm and just after the storm. But the last four or five fish that have showed have been right over the baited area, right over these three rods. Um, one of them was decent fish as well. The other one that I saw clearly wasn't so massive, but one was a good fish. And the fact that four or five shows smack over the top of these three rods over the baited area makes me think there is some bait still left out there and the roach and the rud and whatever was feeding on me last night hasn't cleared it out. So I'm, I'm sitting here waiting for a bite, getting quite nervous that it might happen because this is not exactly a low stock pit. It's about 15 to 18 acres, I would have said. And there's probably 35, maybe 40 originals left. And I think there's sort of 10 doubles which are recently stocked. So there's not many fish in here, but when they do show, they show quite a lot. So 
it's not the easiest lake in the world, but I'm reasonably hopeful of a bike because they were showing over me, but you never know in waters like this because this place, they can, they can be all over you. They can be showing over the top of your hook baits, no doubt feeding on the, the free offerings, but not get a bite. So they are quite tricky, are quite cagey, but the fact that they're over there does give me confidence. So this is the rig I'm using. It's a 25 pound fluorocarbon. I've got a little sinker in there and it's probably about nine inches long, just a little loop I'm ready to, to connect onto a, a quick clip and then that goes onto a leg clip system. And at this end, I've just got a little D-rig, a swivel, and a tiny little, I don't know, is it eight mil boily, something like that? Maybe, maybe 10 mil boily, but it's, it's, it's a little tiny pop-up. Now these pop-ups will pop up a size eight hook, but I've got a size six on here and I've got a little ring swivel as well, just to give it that bit of extra weight, because I, I want this to be on the deck. I don't, I'm not trying to fish it popped up. Um, so I want this little, pink hybrid boilie just to sit just above the hook. I don't want the hook sitting like that so the hook point so the, the bend of the hook's all proud because I'm fishing over gravel. And if I'm fishing over gravel and there's little rod and roach just knocking this around and fish feeding around it, the hook point can quite easily catch on a bit of gravel as a as a fish moves it around and dink that hook point because I do like sharpening hook points. But it can quite easily dink the hook point but I want it just sitting just like that so the hook's flat and the bait's just sitting up and just wafting around a little bit. And I just think that's a better presentation when the fish are feeding on hemp, um, little bits of sweet corn, small boilies, crushed boilies, and all the bits and pieces I've got in my spod mix. Uh, and I just think a, a 20 mil bait or an 18 mil bait sitting out there would be completely unnatural and completely against what, um, what the fish are feeding on. And then to complement that, I'll just thread a stick down the hook link and put that and just sort of nick the hook points just into the top of it. And what that does, it prevents any tangles, gives good separation in the air when I, when I cast it out. It should give a decent uh, separation when it hits the water. And once the PVA dissolves, it will just leave a load of crumb all around my hook bait. So if this, if this fish in the area and the roach leave it unmolested, when the carp comes in, there's a nice cloud of dust and boily crumb all around the hook bait. So that's what I'm fishing at the minute. And I've not seen any, any fish out there for a few minutes, but I'm just hoping now that they're not showing and they're getting heads down on the uh, on the baited spot, so I'm just praying I get a bite, hoping I get a bite, so uh, time will tell, we'll see. <laughs> So this is a spod mix that I've been using. As you can see, there's no big food items in there at all. The biggest food item is the 10 mil cell boilers I've got in there. Um, and what I'm trying to achieve here is just a feeding situation that's full of attraction, but nothing that's gonna fill the fish up. You know, the water temperature out there is really cold, as you can probably tell by what I'm wearing. You know, I'm wearing winter clothes in, in late May, and that's because it's been quite chilly spring so far. I'm guessing the water temperature is only 12, maybe 13 degrees tops which it shouldn't be at this time of year, it should be 17, 18. So I don't think the fish are really getting the heads down, but something like this is just pure attraction. You've got loads of hemp oil in there. I mix it all together, uh, let the hemp oil seep into the boilers. And I've got probably a kilo or so of crushed and chopped boilers. All, there's a lot of boily crumb down in there, just all crumbed down, loudly hemp soaking. And it's, uh, this is the boiler I'm using. It's a mixture of, the cell, which is an old favourite of mine from Mainline, and I have been using a prototype, but I remember the previous time when I was on here, a few years ago, they loved the hybrid. So now I'm, uh, I'm back on the hybrid, so I'm mixing the cell and the hybrid together. In here I've got 18 mil and 14 mil baits, but that doesn't really matter because I'm literally crushing everything down. So none of these baits here are going in whole. They're all getting crushed into little bits and pieces and, and, and dust. And it's, it's what's produced me these two fish, and it's, it's what did me a few fish back in the last year. You know, I can remember a stunning linear in fact, out of this swim as the, as the wind was hacking in. Um, and the fish would just sort of started showing just out there about 40, 50 yards. And then slowly, as the time wore on, I, was, I was, should have been packing down, but I managed to eat the session out, eat the session out a little bit longer. And I picked up a 31 pound linear, which was an absolute stunner right at the end of the session. So that's where this kind of mix started. It's, it's not groundbreaking by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just knowing what to put in front of the fish in the conditions. So when they're not really hungry, when they're full up, when they're not really eating that much and the water temperature is quite cold, I just try to give them loads and loads of attraction 
items that the rotor gunner eats, items that the tench can quite easily get the, the head into. Uh, the rudder gonna have a go and it, it'll get the carp grubbing for a, a long period of time without really filling them up. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. And uh, like I say, it's, it's done me okay so far with those two fish. I just hope that uh, I can sneak a couple of more out of the next few weeks. Well, it's my third week down on my syndicate water for this year and uh, I've got to add another fish. <laughs> I seem to be ticking these fish off one by one. Um, I'm not getting loads of fish, I'm not getting hits, but I seem to be getting one fish every week, which, which will do me at the minute because this water is not as easy as it used to be when I first started fishing here seven years ago. And uh, I did a fair bit of blanking last year and it's, it's proven to be a tough old place. So to tick one off each session is, uh, is, is good enough for me. So basically I've, I've fished around a bit this session. Started off down that bottom corner, but sort of felt a bit hemmed in. I was kind of on fish, but not fully on them. Um, and there was somebody either side and you, when you're in a corner like that and it's, it's busy, then I didn't quite feel it. So then I've moved up to this end of the lake. I did um, a second night in this swim. I uh, did a quick night and then I saw a few fish in the bay around to my corner. So I moved into the bay uh, with full intention of doing the night in there. But um, I skillfully managed to spook every fish out of that bay. Um, so I fished there until just before dusk and I realised that the fish weren't coming back. It was simple as that. They, they were they were spooked, they were gone, and they were they were staying gone. So I took the last minute decision to move into here, and uh, I'm kind of glad I did. Um, you know, and it was nice to to catch another fish, and this time a mirror, you know, a 34 pound mirror known as Popeye. Um, it was not the not the darkest fish in the world, quite a pale fish, but uh, it's always nice to tip one off. Now I've got literally two or three hours left before it's time to pack up, but. Uh, Quite happy to catch and uh, I think that's a fitting way to end the video.